Hi everyone, this video will cover question PQ7-1 in your textbook. These are the transactions that we will be looking at in this video. By the end of the video, you will be able to enter transactions related to accounts receivable into the expanded accounting equation. To recap, accounts receivable is an asset account that represents the legal right of a business to collect cash from a customer at some point in the future. It is used when a customer pays the business on account. In this chapter, you learned about two new accounts. The first is Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, or AFDA for short. AFDA is the amount of accounts receivable the business estimates they will not collect in cash, and it is a contra asset account. The second is Bad Debt Expense. This is the cost of selling on credit, and it is recorded in the same period as the revenue which resulted in the accounts receivable being recorded in the first place. There are two methods to record uncollectible accounts receivable. The first is the direct write-off method, which can be used when the business knows which accounts will be uncollectible. The second is the allowance method, which records an estimate of how much will be uncollectible. The two ways to make an estimate are the overall rate and the aging of accounts receivable. We can now input the transactions into the expanded accounting equation. I have already added the account names and opening balances under the appropriate financial reporting element. Number one, total sales during the year. Accounts receivable will increase and sales revenue will increase by the same amount. Number two, products are returned by customers. So we will decrease accounts receivable and we will also decrease sales returns and allowances. Number three, cash collections of accounts receivable. So in this case, accounts receivable will decrease and cash will increase by the same value. Number four, write-off of accounts receivable. So when we use the, right, the direct write-off method, we decrease our accounts receivable by the given value and we increase our allowance for doubtful accounts. Number five, two customers that were previously written off send in a check. There are two entries required here. The first is to reverse the original write-off. So we will increase accounts receivable and decrease AFDA. The second entry is to record the actual cash, cash collection. We will do this by decreasing accounts receivable and increasing cash. Number six, the business estimates the uncollectible accounts receivable using the aging schedule provided. So in this case, we will be using the allowance method. Here is the aging schedule that was given to us. In order to calculate the estimates, we multiply the amount by the estimated uncollectible percentage for that category. For example, for current, we multiply 60,500 by 0 0.01 to get the estimate. This is how the chart should look when it's finished. Our total uncollectible amount is 13,915. So as we can see in our aging schedule, the estimated uncollectible amount for the period is 13,915. This means that the ending balance in AFDA must equal to negative 13,915. However, since we have an existing balance in AFDA, we cannot just input this number into the expanded accounting equation. Instead, we have to find an adjusting entry. To find the adjusting entry, we can set up a chart like the one we see on the screen. The first number we need is what we have in AFDA. This can be found by adding up all of the numbers in that account prior to this transaction. What we want in the account is negative 13,915 as we got in our aging schedule. And we can set our adjustment to equal X. Now using this equation, we can solve for X, which will be the amount of our adjustment. And when we do this, we get negative 12,748. So since we are using the allowance method, we can go back to our expanded accounting equation and put negative 12,748 under AFDA 
and we can put 12,748 under bad debt expense. So to finish off the question, we can add up all of the totals in each of the columns. I have already inputted these numbers at the end of our chart. To ensure that we have done the question correctly, we can make sure that the final balance in AFDA equals the amount in the aging schedule, which in this case it does, so our adjustment is right. For further practice, you can work on any of the other questions from Chapter 7, such as PQ7-2, which deals with an overall rate rather than an aging schedule. To summarize, in this video, we learned about recording sales revenue and sales returns and allowances into the expanded accounting equation. We also learned about using the direct write-off method and the allowance method to record uncollectible accounts receivable. Thank you everyone for tuning into this video.